Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at The Hub, presented by Capital Workspaces. We finally have our beloved Mark Horn, who's a member of the Capital Workspaces family here in our offices in Bethesda. Hi, Mark. How are you? Great. Thank you for having (laughs) me. You look great. Good. Thank Thank you. you. No, thank you. We've been wanting to do this for a while. (laughs) So let's start. You're a community assistant specialist with the CW. Yes. How did you find out about Capital Workspaces? That is a good question. I think I was transitioning. I um, looking for something uh, to supplement my income. Okay. So currently my full-time job or position, I'm a manager at the commissary on Andrews Air Force Base. Really? So I run the uh, fulfillment of stocking shelves. Uh, okay. In that I didn't commissary. know that all this time. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's my primary job gig. Uh, this I just have fun here. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Yeah. Mark allows me to uh, express my creativity, um, work with great people. Uh, We have two locations that we're involved with. And everyone that I've come in contact with since I've been here has been amazing. Okay. Now, at the Andrews Air Force Base, since you're in the military, how long have you worked there? Oh, wow. Uh, Since I retired from the Army. Wow, so, Army. Yeah. And thank you. So I know you, people say this all the time, but sincerely, thank you for your service, you and your family. Thank you. What made you choose the military? I know you, your, your dad was in the military as well. Yes. So mm-hmm. I'm sure that's one of the reasons. But why did you choose to serve in our nation's military? Well, I honestly did not want to. Okay. Um, I did the ROTC in high school. Okay. I did ROTC in college for about two years. And then I got bored with it. Oh. I just hit a brick wall. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to put a uniform on. I'm tired of cutting my hair. This is, <laughs> this is crazy. And so I stopped. Um, but then once I finished school, uh, again, I had a roadblock. So I was looking for a career. Couldn't find anything in journalism or broadcasting. Uh, I overlooked teaching. So I told my dad, I'm going in the Army. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going in the Army. He's like, you don't want to do the Air Force? The reason why is because in high school I did Air Force in college, I did Air Force. Okay. And then all of a sudden, here's this 360 coming. And he's like, I went in the Air Force. You don't want to go? I'm like, nope, going in the Army. So, okay. So what, may I ask, when you said you were in high school and college, when you said you did the Air Force, what does that mean? ROTC. ROTC. Yes. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's specific to the um, Air Force. Yes. Did not know that bit of history. Mm-hmm. So, and your dad was military Air Force. Was your mom as well? No. Okay. Any siblings in the military as well? No. Okay, yeah, just you. Mm-hmm. So how was your Army experience? Oh, it was great. I did more traveling with them than I did with my father. My father blessed me with uh, taking me to Germany, taking me to France, oh. uh, taking me to India. But the Army India. yeah, the army took me to Austria, Africa, England, uh, South America. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the West Coast, and I've never been on the West Coast, so okay. it was awesome. My family took a road trip one time because uh, I had an aunt that was, uh, she was Air Force, prior Air Force, and she was stationed in Idaho. And um, my family's pretty creative, so they were like, well, hey, since we're out here, let's drive to California. And <laughs> they drove to California, and then they drove back. At that time, I was in Germany, so I missed it. I missed okay. the trip. Okay. Yeah. And... How long were you in the military? You said you retired. How long were you in the military? For 16 years. 16 years. Yes. It went by really fast. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the during the Persian Gulf and— After all that. After all that. After that, that yeah. We were—our campaign was Iraqi freedom. Iraqi freedom. Yes. And what, what was that experience like? Well, I would like to say it was a culture shock, but it wasn't. Um, all of the stuff that they prepped us for, different languages that we had to learn, different terms of how to execute, uh, how to be respectful for of uh, others' culture, um, it didn't come into play. Um, we were fortunate enough to not have to go outside of the wire too much, uh, but when we did, we you know we were well prepared. Okay, how many languages do you speak? Three. Three, and those are Spanish, French, and Iraq. Really. Mm-hmm. I did French in elementary school, high school, college. Spanish just, my Spanish is broken Spanish. Okay. Because it's not of a classroom setting. It's just from people that I've yeah, ran conversational. across. Conversations, things that I've picked up on. 
Um, my circle does not consist of Spanish people. Okay. But when I do come around or I'm, I'm aware of someone, I can insert something. Not a lot, just something. Okay. And, uh, but my, and my, Iraq, my Iraqi, my um, um, Fallujah, it's, it's eh, okay, but... Wow. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've used the Iraqi <laughs> You knew Iraqi I was about language. to ask. Yeah, it's been a minute. That's um, incredible. Now, mm-hmm. may, I, may I ask how, well, I guess it's relative, but how difficult was that to learn that language? Oh, very, very, because um, we didn't have anyone in our unit that we could kind of lean on yeah. and say, hey, you know, what does this mean? Or is this a social thing? Is this yeah. a business thing, formal thing? Uh, so we didn't have that. And our instructors were pretty much in the same lane as we were because they didn't have anyone peer-wise, colleague-wise that spoke the language, had family members uh, that could understand the culture and and things. So, yeah, we were were definitely struggling. And um, every time we came to work, we would have to put our English to the side and we would have to assimilate in that language. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. So everything that we were doing uh, work-wise, maintenance-wise, uh, preparation-wise, we had to uh, speak in that language. They wanted us to get used to it and comfortable so it's not forced or it's not stagnant. I understand. Try to be as, as comfortable, comfortable but genuine as possible right. with the people surrounding mm-hmm. you. Yeah. So um, great experiences then with your yes. Iraqi freedom. Mm-hmm. That's great. So, um, all right, personal, your family, where were you raised um, and your children? You have two sons. Yes. Okay. Trevor and Travis. Travis. Yes. And they're twins. Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you said they're interested in soccer? One of them is interested in soccer. Uh, it's a shocker. Uh, <laughs> I don't play soccer. I don't have any soccer playing friends. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, but it's good. It's good because um, I get to learn something different. Yeah, DC uh, United. Yeah, I get to learn about a sport that I've never really played. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, I guess uh, we're going to be taking some trips down to the stadium. Oh yeah, uh, which time. is good. I'm not that. I'm not that far. So I think the beauty with them uh, when we do hang out is that uh, I'm so close to everything: the stadium, the soccer stadium. Uh, if we get lucky and get the RFK back in the city, then yeah. Mm, yeah, that thing is deteriorating. Ooh, yeah. Big time. Every Big time I time. drive, I'm like, it's about to fall. Do you remember, as a fun fact, during uh, Mayor Williams's administration when they had the NASCAR? Oh, I remember, <laughs> yeah. They literally had a NASCAR races crazy, mm-hmm. insane loud over there in that area. So this mm-hmm. DC has experienced a lot. A lot, um, and going into your community outreach in Ward Seven and mm-hmm. Eight, what does that look like? Well, um, that engulfs a lot of prayer, okay. a lot of prayer, and uh, a lot of support from family uh, within the community or those that are familiar. Uh, with prayer. Okay. Um, what has transpired is uh, the community and other communities uh, surrounding us within the United States have picked up the baton and would like to continue with the worldly progressions or the worldly events. Okay. Um, that unfortunately leads our people to sort of a catast- catastrophic sort of mind play, if you will, meaning. Everything seems simple, seems normal or simplistic, but mentally, you're getting it. They're giving it to you. Uh, It's not pleasant. You can't see it now, but 10 years later, you will see it. Mm, Any specific areas, like in Ward, because I grew up in Ward 7. I've lived in Ward 8 near off of Mississippi Avenue near the Mm -hmm. Ark. I was Mm -hmm. there for about a year or two with my children. When you talk about specific outreach, what specifically were you doing or are you doing in Ward 7 or Ward 8? We are trying to uh, provide a platform for young men. Okay. uh, As well as the mid-level male, whether it's mid-30s, mid-40s, and as well as for the seniors. Uh, We had a uh, a notion and we said all of the women have great functions. Always. They have lunchings, they have dinners, outings. We don't have any of that. Mm. Um, when we look at the celebrations of Mother's Day and Father's Day, there's no comparisons. The women get great gifts. <laughs> they get great cards, candy, oh, yeah. trips. We 
we get um, really <laughs> crazy tired. <laughs> um, our candy is not oh, very it's fresh. fresh. It's just, no. you know, it's just <laughs> not. not it's just not good. Outdated, expired you know, candy. Yeah, if we got you know if we get socks, we have to be careful because you know the dog is gonna want to get the sock. He won't mess with the woman's stuff, but you know. So, but you know what? That's funny. We just did. You know, we just taped the Women's uh, International Women's History Month episode, okay. and we touched on just the difference in celebrating men and celebrating women. Mm-hmm. And what I have found is that um, men kind of. Some men, loners, mm-hmm. we do want to celebrate you more, but I think it's it's kind of you guys are centered around specific activities like yeah. sports. Yeah. If it's a guy thing or something you're interested in, then you uh, partner up with a guy who does the same thing. Right. But as far as celebration, like my dad, unfortunately, he didn't like celebration. So mm-hmm. even when he was celebrating on his job, they had a big dinner. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell us till later that it was over with. I'm just like, we would have been there. Yeah. He was a very isolated to himself kind of guy. Mm-hmm. So I think that those are those differences. So I thank you for that. Oh. Uh, I remember um, Trayon White, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, the council him. member. Yeah. Uh, my family and his family, we attended the same church. Okay. He's been very helpful. And he visited you guys' um, office in Spring Valley. Yeah, they told really? me. He was in the Spring Valley office. I think Milan may have said something. or Yeah, and I was shocked because okay. during his run as mayor, mm-hmm. I had contacted his um, mom on Facebook trying to get him. But, of course, he was very busy. Very busy. But he yeah. is a he is the man when it comes to grassroots, mm-hmm. yeah. face-to-face engagement, yeah. um, rallying the people. Mm-hmm. So he is a great resource. And seeing yeah. him grow is mm-hmm. incredible. Yeah, I told him I liked him. I liked him because he didn't have any fear. Yes. And I said— um, I said, we have the Napoleon complex. I said, this is a shout out for all the short people. <laughs> um, I said, you're right here on the pound, right here on MLK. Mm-hmm. I said, my high school is right around the corner. I said, so I know all about it. I said, but we commend you. We thank you. Yes. And we're greatly appreciative of you for representing uh, that Ward 8. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he really doesn't have any fear. And the fact that he was under Marion Barry. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was oh. tut- Yeah, he was um, under his tutelage. Okay. And I think that— That's a good thing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I thought you were going to say Vincent Gray or— No, I've met Vincent Gray. Vincent <laughs> okay. Gray, I've met him when he was campaigning. I lived in Ward 7. I was a homeowner in Ward 7. I okay. met him. Mm-hmm. Um, great guy. Took the time out to actually walk the streets to talk yeah. to you and get to know you. Mm-hmm. Um, but Marion Barry, there's not enough that can be said about him because yeah. he's the reason a majority of us had even money in our homes from the yeah. summer youth employment program yeah. mm-hmm. that still exists to this day yeah. and they increase the age because yeah. I think it's up into your mid-20s. Really? I think so. Maybe wow. 21, 22, something like that. Okay. But And he was a great um, fighter for the seniors as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's where a lot of the programming that we have in D.C. comes from. It stems from him. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember just um, lastly to talk about him he wanted to implement a program that if you did get evicted, mm-hmm. ev- evicting with dignity or something like that, okay. that you could have your uh, belongings stored somewhere. Nice. Because, you know, when you get evicted, you've seen people yeah. sit out on the street. Mm-hmm. Everybody comes to shopping yeah, and sure going do. through your stuff. Yeah. And then you have to go all over again. Yeah. And many people have, um, unfortunately, because of the income and jobs and the... Everything that goes on in our city have experienced that. And so that was one of the programs that I knew that he was trying to implement that I don't think that that took off. But that okay. that's the kind of heart he had. Yeah. I know yeah. publicly other things were said, but he was a, a great man of the people. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Barry came to our high school graduation at the Constitution Hall. Uh, Treyon White, he is a graduate of uh, Maryland Eastern Shore. Yes. Uh, my, I have a couple of family members that attended and was actually in his class with him. So mm-hmm. very familiar with his uh, his work. Oh, indeed. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. I, I believe that um, even though Marion Bowser was hard to beat, I believe his future is mayor of D.C. Yeah, I, I do. Re- yeah, I think so. I think so. Indeed. Um, we'll see. Um, the hard part about what's happening right now is the transition. And what I mean by the transition, uh, folks from the 80s, 90s, early Mm -hmm. 2000s have a different view on things versus the people of today and how they see things. So if we can bridge that gap, 
Because what I mean by that is today you have to be very, very cognizant of what you say, oh, when you say it, how you say it. Yes. Um, we didn't have that issue uh, during my era. So the times have changed. Yes. Um, we weren't as filtered back then. I think you have to be filtered today. Uh, we yeah. don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. Anything like that, so. Yeah, the world, I say, has gotten bigger and smaller all at the same time due to yeah. social media mm -hmm. and the people that you can encounter. Yeah. So it's like you have to be very savvy with that. Mm -hmm. But being raised in the 80s and the 90s and the war on drugs, and there is a great gap between, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the seniors had to raise children, yeah. their grandchildren. Yeah. And so a lot was lost. Mm -hmm. So we almost like lost a generation in the middle there. Mm -hmm. And so now with that struggle of older people raising their grandchildren, even great grandchildren and this in the school system and passing yeah. kids just to be passing them mm -hmm. and the illiteracy rate, a lot of that. So now what we have is just, just like, boom, OK, how do we maneuver yeah. to push them forward mm -hmm. and progress instead of um, regress. Yeah. So can you share any of the specific names of the programs that you guys are involved in or any upcoming efforts that you guys have in your outreach program? Right now we have a um, father son uh, since the Nats, I think they have, the Nats have an opening today, this afternoon, if, as a matter of fact. So we are trying to piggyback off of them and do a father-son uh, softball game down at Anacostia oh, Park. Oh, wow. That will be at the end of April. Okay. Uh, so we're excited about that. We got a lot of participants. Um, we got the lot secured. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, we're basically trying to shadow some of the late uh, civil rights activists as well as uh, some of their methods on how to get uh, food to children, yes. how to get uh, resources, medical, uh, dental, uh, things of that nature, uh, mental health. I understand that uh, it's weird, but to me, uh, but now in this millennial age, mental health is such a big uh, issue. Oh my God. Uh, so I have to find myself doing research to uh, get a better understanding of what exactly is mental illness. So. Yes, yeah. and especially over there in Ward 8 where St. Elizabeth's Hospital is. Yeah. And a lot of it has been, I think, renovated to make room for areas of, you know, residences. Mm -hmm. But if you drive through that area of MLK, you'll see a lot of the, I guess, former residences mm -hmm. of St. Elizabeth's, you know, walking the streets and um, they still need um, great care. And yeah. you are right. We all need to educate ourselves on the best way to... So they won't be left behind. Yeah. But it was, I don't know, it was different. I know um, my mom was, she was a little scary because she's like, ah, oh, he's going to Baloo. So even though we lived in Anacostia, she would drop me at the McDonald's on Martin Luther King Avenue, okay. which was right across from the main gate to St. Elizabeth's. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And so it was funny because, you know, I'm looking at her like, you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Are you trying to yeah, tell me something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, as a youth, I think I was probably 15, 14 or 15 years old, and I'm sitting in there uh, killing time, waiting for class to start. And it was funny to me because yeah. the folks from St. Elizabeth's would walk, get up from their booth, they walk up to you, they put their finger almost on your food and they would ask you are you going to eat that oh, are you going to wow. finish that oh, wow. and so if you weren't familiar yeah and i'm looking i'm like i'm a kid what i'm going to do am mm. i going to tell the manager am i going to tell the person behind the counter am i going to tell this guy sitting next to me so i just observed everything that was going on from that mcdonald's all the way up to the school we had a frozen custard black owned uh frozen custard ice cream uh store or restaurant right on the corner, I think it was 4th and uh, Martin Luther King Avenue. Okay. They closed down, though, unfortunately. But yeah, um, yeah just um, those individuals, the way they depict them now, they were worse then, but I think their common sense was more on point. They were able to discern, okay, this is a regular person. I'm not going to bother him. I'm not going to panhandle him or anything like that. I'm not going to harass him. They would just go about their business. Whereas today, it seems oh, as man. if they're a little bit more forceful, needy, forceful, erratic. erratic. Yes. And so it just kind of makes you wonder. Yeah. Perhaps they may have changed their medications. I'm not sure. 
And I, their methodology has changed too, because I know um, in Northwest DC downtown, not too far from the warehouse, there are people who will give you their um, cash app. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Very savvy. Yeah. Whatever you have to do to take care of your needs, I'm uh-huh. never going to knock it. But that's interesting in the progression of times that we're in yeah. to say where uh, where people are. So, um, okay, on to the seat. And thank you for that. No problem. And on to the um, Capital Workspaces. Yes. You were sharing about um, the booming day that you had in CW. You're going to share that with the um, office openings today? Yes. Um, we uh, opened, well, we, myself and my colleague, Raham, who is great, by the way. Yes, she is. Um, we get, it's, it's the funniest thing. We get the best excitement when it comes time to staging offices. Oh. I don't know. Our creative juices start to kick oh, in and yeah. next thing you know, it's like one to twin powers, <laughs> <You're> activate. <good>. <laughs> so, yes. And we are, you know, we're brainstorming. And what makes it great is our boss. Oh. Our boss, Mark McMillan, uh, will say, yeah, it's great. Go with it. We'll look yes. at each other. We'll look at each other like, did he say what I think he just yes. said? Yes. So we're like, Mark, um, <laughs> just can, you, be sure. can you repeat that? We just want to make sure so we don't have to put it in writing. He's like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> we're looking at each other. Well. Okay, go oh, yeah. for it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we, we love working together. Uh, we love putting events together. Um, we love setting them up. Yeah. I don't particularly care for breaking them down. But <laughs> nonetheless, we love setting them up. And we love to see the turnout. Oh, absolutely. Of the people that come through. Um we also like just to get the feedback on the clients, the neighbors, people within the community. Um, and it's gotten to a point, the mail, the postal guy comes in and converses with us for at least a good 15, 20 Didn't minutes. Didn't he pop up at the stroll event? Yes. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. seeing that gentleman. Yes. wondering. Yep. Yeah. The UPS guy comes <laughs> and talks to us for about a good 10, 15 minutes. That's the atmosphere that you guys have created there. Yes. Then Mark is a visionary. I keep saying it. Everybody here has some kind of gifting, some kind of talent, mm-hmm. a great bio, mm-hmm. uh, great experiences in the area. He mm-hmm. has a talent for bringing those people together. Yeah. Most of us found him through Indian. Indeed.com. Indeed. You're, you're so right. You are so, and it was so funny because he called me and uh, we set up the appointment to come and interview. I interviewed with him, met Rayham. And so we left. What was so funny, Mark calls and he's like, well, hey, buddy, how did you, you know, what did you think? And I'm like, I, it was great. Yeah. And he's like, well, you didn't call me back. So I didn't think you were interested. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm definitely interested. Yeah, yeah. This is a great opportunity. Oh, yeah. It's in D.C. It's close. Heck, yeah, sign me up. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. With the same thing, I, I met him, interviewed. I don't know how much time it um, spanned, but next year, no, I'm in the CW family, and I've loved it. Everybody here, it just seems so very organic or natural. Mm-hmm. It's not forced. We have right. so much fun in every office. And you guys put on a great event for Stroll Magazine. Thank you. Thank oh, my goodness. Thank it was you. When I walked in there, it felt kind of, oh, am I underdressed a little bit? I <laughs> felt the same way. <laughs> I felt the I same said, maybe way. I should have dressed up a little. It was such a great, and we've gotten so many great leads for the podcast yes. from that event. Mm-hmm. So I'm so excited about planning some new stuff. Yep. So yes. what's coming up? In the Spring Valley location, anything scheduled coming up yes, soon? Yes, we have, um, I wish I had my notes, but we have a, I think it's a Lunch and Learn. Oh, I uh, and I think that is going to be sponsored by our good friend, Ben. Okay. Um, that is oh, going yeah, to Ben Amata. Be, yes. Okay. That is going to be in April. Okay. Uh, so right now we're just, um, we're putting all the... Right now, we're just connecting our dots. Okay. Before we cross our T's and dot our I's, we're just connecting the dots to see as we go through step one, step two, step three, step four. And then we will put our presentation before Mark. Mark gives us the green light. And oh, it's yeah. a ship ahoy. Yeah. <laughs> so what else do you do? What is your downtime? Like, I know you have two wonderful sons that are nine. Mm-hmm. But what else do you enjoy doing besides Capital Workspaces, your other full-time gig? What else do you do? Or do you have no. time for anything else? Well, I tell you, um, time has definitely changed because uh, when I was a kid, the days just seemed like they would just never end. Uh, now that I've gotten older, um, these days, time is just flying by. I don't really think it's on my side. Uh, another thing that's messing me up is I thought that when the time goes back or whatever, that there's more daylight when you wake up. 
Okay. And as of late, when I wake up, it's still dark. Well, what time are you waking up? I wake up at about four, five o'clock yeah, in about the morning. Yeah, five o'clock And so morning. it throws me off. Okay. And I'm like, if I don't look at the clock, I'm like, got a couple, I got some time, <laughs> and I go back to sleep. Before I know it, it's 7 o'clock. Oh, like, my Not goodness. good. Um, but on my on my downtime, I when I get off work, I downgrade sweats or sneaks or whatever. I get on my bike. I go for a ride. Okay. I might ride up to Bladensburg because I'm, I'm right there at Anacostia Park. So yes. Um, I take that trail. It takes me up into Bladensburg, Mount Rainier, University of Maryland. Okay. Uh, so I'm all over the place. Um, I was trying to get my list for running because I like to participate in running events. So okay. I do 5Ks, 10Ks. Really? Yes. We were just um, talking about that with the previous guy from Capital Energy Training about when I see people jogging, I'm just amazed. Yeah. That you, that <laughs> yeah. You, I'm like, wow, you're actually jogging. Yeah. So, so I forgot to mention to Mark and Rahab, the last run I did was, uh, I think it was Run for Chocolate. And those Ooh, guys. Wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Motivation. Yeah. Run the, for chocolate. Mm-hmm. You get chocolate at the end of at the, the run. end of the race. <laughs> yes. And no. they, those guys know it. Capital Workspaces, they know I love chocolate. So, really? Yes. Yeah, chocolate I'm a big fan. white chocolate fan, even though I don't eat it them. I don't eat sugar that much, but mm-hmm. white chocolate is my yeah. thing. Yeah, huge chocolate fan. Wow. Um, so um, wait a minute. Run for chocolate. Mm-hmm. A little bit about that. How new is that? How long has that been going on? That has been going on for three years now. Okay. They just started. Um, they are new on the scene. Normally, the, the mainstays are Susan Coleman. Uh, run for cancer. Yes, yes, yes. Um, or they normally call it race for race for race the for cure. Race for the cure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you have the jingle belt. I'm sorry. Is it the jingle belt run? They didn't do that this year. Okay. I think because of the COVID restrictions. Okay. So a lot of um, the races were postponed until further notice. But this run for chocolate just blasted out Man. the gate. And I knew I had to be a part of that. So there's just a bunch of tables at the end, like a fondue. Mm-hmm. We'll be doing like chocolate yeah. bars, like a bunch of chocolate snacks. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the run. They are so much fun. If you, I think a lot of the structure has changed over the years. I know I only participated because I ran in high school and college. So when you go to these events, one race in particular that I went to this is going to crack you up and you would never think. <laughs> But it was a cider run, and they had pale ale before the race and after the race. So wait a minute. This is Mm alcoholic-driven. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) And so, you know, I was talking to some guys, and they were like— Is that safe? But go ahead. Well, that was my primary question, because I'm like— I'm like, oh, you can't, you can't drink beer and run. And I'm like, I've been doing this for like eight years. You cannot <laughs> do drink this. And run. It will just. There's gonna be a lot of pit stops. It's gonna mess you up. <laughs> this guy comes to me. He's like, no, not before the race, after the race. Okay. He said it. It allows your muscles to calm down, relax. You don't have to take an ibuprofen. You don't have to take any sort of aspirin. Just drink you a nice bud or ale. Paul Medina, we yep. have to have to have a conversation. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Hops, I yeah. guess, because of the, the wheat, the content of beer. There you Look go. Look at there. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, the drinkers, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Wow. And then some of them will have a full spread. You will get fruit. You will get your beverages. You'll get your nuts, your walnuts, your pistachios. Oh, well, that's yeah. and see, that's a motivator for me. Tell yeah. me I'm going to eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm eating at the end. Yeah. Oh, I'm running towards. That's great. I'm running yeah. towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Do you run with your sons or? Do- I want to. Okay. Uh, because I, they're interested in playing sports, so I'm trying to get their endurance up. But okay. This a this era of kids, they. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, it's different. Yeah. If we're going shopping, they're oh, oh, faster, yeah, they're faster that's than the me. That's the motivation. I'm yeah. getting something. Yeah, they're faster than me. And I'm like, wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> How did you get downstairs so fast? <laughs> we're waiting on you, Dad. You want us to start the car? Like, oh, my God. So, yeah. you're, so you're a 70s baby. I'm 71. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm super, super old school. Um, our music tastes are totally different. Oh, I don't goodness. listen to rap. And they're like, what? I just don't R- listen to None it. at all? It's Get uh, out of it's, here. it's negative. Um, well, the art trying... form or just the music? The, the uh, lyrics? The... Or the, that's what debate I have. Is it the yeah. art form or is it the content? It's both. Because here's the thing. Okay. Uh, if you 
take the vocals out, you just have a beat. Yes. Okay. The beat is good. Yes. Um, but that's like listening to jazz. Okay. You're so, right. An instrumental. <laughs> right. Yes. So then we pull the vocals back in, and then I say, okay, let's sit down and let's break this whatever that they're talking about down. Okay. So I would explain to my boys, hey, listen. You can't go to school or work or get on the bus or go to the mall or go to McDonald's and be derogatory yeah. amongst women yes, or absolutely. people of other races. Yes, yes. You might get beat up. Yeah. My <laughs> reflexes are too slow. You know what? So Daddy can't, can't save you. I'm I can't, coming. I can't save you. <laughs> you know, I might be able to get the belt. The first strike is good. The yeah, second strike, after that, it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> it is, I love it. It is a wrap. I love it. Yep. But let me say this. And um, when you talked about prayer, I'm not sure, a man of faith. Andy Minio, my granddaughter loves him. He's a Christian oh, rapper. Okay. Oh my goodness, um, Lecrae, mm-hmm. and he incorporates. Well, he is a Christian rapper as well. Well, a, a rapper, a Christian that raps. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of good stuff. But I actually thought about that recently mm-hmm. for people that have the issue with music, and I said to myself, is it the music or is it the content? Because, like you say, you can take the words out of it, right. and the music is really beautiful. Yeah. Because um, uh, Spotify has an option for R and B instrumentals. Really? You, oh my God! Didn't know that. Um, Boot up or anything okay. or um, Beyonce, mm-hmm. all instrumental, just wow. the music. Okay. I listen to that all the time. Have to check so that out. yeah, very comforting. Yeah. Yeah. So so what else? What music do you listen to? Well, as you know, uh, you mentioned earlier, I am a 70s baby. Yeah. So uh, I think it, it shocked my father uh, because I remember when we flew to Germany, when we got settled, I put on, I think it was either Hot Cold Sweat or Chuck Brown. Oh, my God. And my father was like, but I was more like into the instrumentals. I'm like, listen yeah. to the keyboard, listen to the horns Yeah. in that regard because he always had me listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, my God. Parliament. read my mind. And so I became one of those instrumentalists. And then, of course, I had to play the piano. Okay. I didn't, I didn't like it. I thought it was a little weird, but I had to take piano lessons and, and all of that stuff. So yeah. I like instrumental music. That's Go-Go? why I love Go-Go. Oh, yeah. yeah. The beats. And it's so innate for us. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing that the percussions and the beats, and we feel them, and the way that we dance, I'm not mm. talking about the end of the provocative, but right, right. just the natural way that we dance. When mm-hmm. I see videos from Africa and other brown countries, mm-hmm. it's literally the same thing. At yeah. African weddings, mm-hmm. I'm just like, we're doing the exact same thing. Never yeah. been there. Yeah. So that is just like an, an innate love of of beads and music. And I've been sharing with them before that I play my music very loud. Oh, okay. Very fresh. Yeah, the, the, drum, <laughs> the drum sound is universal. Oh. For every individual on this planet, it's mm. universal. Okay. So it doesn't matter your background, okay. your ethnicity. Uh, if grandpa and grandma can groove to it, it might be a little slow, <laughs> but if they can groove to it, you know that you'll be grooving to it and the future generations Absolutely. will be grooving to it. Can you share some of your time in Germany? Uh, yes. I had to learn Germany. I had to, I'm sorry. I had to learn German um, hard, on the hard way. Um my dad would go to work and uh, he would say, hey, listen, you know, just stay here, cool out, uh, unless you are comfortable with the things that I've taught you. And so just like when he told me not to drive the stick shift uh, when I just got my license and I, as soon as I saw him leave, I went out and got in the car <laughs> and I drove, made a couple of mistakes. So this is what happened while I was in Germany. Uh, he went to work and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Stepped How out. How old were you? I was just about to start high school. So this was the birth of my ninth grade year. Okay. So pocket full of money and itching to just go. Didn't know where to go. And keep in mind, this is way before technology. Okay. So at oh, this era, there's no cell phones. There's no laptops. There's no tablet. Okay. Uh, we don't have cameras on every corner, <laughs> things of that nature. And my French was good. Okay. My Spanish was good, but my German was terrible. Okay. And my counting of German coins was terrible. So oh, I, Lord. I, I go into this shop. <laughs> I want to get a haircut. I get the haircut. I pull out my, I think it was francs or whatever I had in my pocket. And so this guy and I put all this stuff on the counter. We're trying to count oh, the man. funniest thing. I got lucky because that barber knew my dad. Oh, wow. And so it was weird Savior. because I'm like, my palms started sweating. 
I look up in the big mirror. Here comes my dad coming in. No. I'm like, Shh. Wow. But it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. He's like, what are, you, what are you doing here? I told you to. You yeah, know, so yeah, yeah got yeah. that, got that scolding. Okay, yeah. so he did. I'm, I'm imagining. I'm saying they're gonna cheat him out of his. Mind. No, no, because um, what happened was while I was there, my father entered me into an art contest. To my surprise, uh, the locals within that community were really impressed with my work. Um, so I was like, okay. So interestingly enough, the barber knew me. The person at the bakery knew me. Um, the people at my father's job knew me. And then, of course, I would go down to the local gym, uh, shoot hoops from time to time. So those guys knew me. But that only be- uh, that only came about because of the art contest that my father entered me into. And I happened to win it uh, at that time. So what, what is the media? What art? Did just you, regular art. Just regular drawing. Yeah, just yeah. I, I'm not on dots level. I'm okay. Just, I oh could I God. could look at you and draw you or sketch you, but really, I can't even paint. that is an, an yeah. upgrade for um, an artist yeah, with some I, people. But I can't. I want to be like that or at least get to that level. Okay. But yeah, my painting. I, I think it's the patience. Yeah. 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 Color by numbers over here. <laughs> <laughs> Sell them in the Dollar Tree. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So wow. So and it what's in the future for um, Mark Horn as far as. Um, next five years. I know you're raising your sons, but do you have any yep. big plans? Oh, what's happening in 23? Vacationing or uh, anything that you can share? Let's see. Well, um, I will more than likely, they're not going to like it. I'm going to be taking my boys down to the Carolinas okay. uh, to teach them how to hunt, fish, um, and just be without technology for a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh, that's going to, well, the upside is, um, my grandmother willed me her property and her house. Oh, wonderful. However, the towers that are down there, you're not going to get great reception. Okay. So you kind of have to walk out in the fields and hold your phone up mm. and turn it this way or that way. Like in way. the horror movies. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I can't get anything. So, and I know they're going to be heated. They're going to be like, we're never hanging with you again. Um, can you, oh, it's going to be an imagine? adventure of a lifetime. They're yeah. going to, when they get older, I'm sure they're going to appreciate, appreciate it. appreciate it 20 years from now. <laughs> When I'm when I'm kind of like, what? what you say? <laughs> what you say? Remember that, Dad? Yeah. Wow, that's it. What part of the Carolinas? Just because you know we have Andrew, who's from the Carolinas. We have that's so right, many yeah. people from the Carolinas. What part of the Carolinas? I will be heading to Raleigh. Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. And um, land? How many acres? Or oh wow, we're sitting on I think four, four or five. Wow, that's yeah. nice. So we're going to teach them how to farm, how to... Wow, Because you know, I have an incredible. uncle that actually, present day, is still a farmer. No. Yeah. Living in the city, you see movies and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm serious. It seems like, you know somebody that farms? Yeah. What is What does his farm consist of? Uh, you have uh, the grains. You okay. have uh, the cotton. You have uh, your tobacco. You have your uh, your greens, your collards. Wow. Uh, you have uh, corn. Uh, Just for self, or does he sell? Oh, he sells. Okay. Yeah, he sells. Um, but there are other people within that community that participate also. So it's more of a. I think they have a bigger conglomerate that they yeah. do. So, wow. but uh, it's a it's a wealth of information because they tell you. Well, they don't. My uncle tells me what chemicals they're using on the vegetation, mm. uh, how it could or may affect you, uh, short term, long term, yeah. things of that nature. So, yeah. Yes, that's a, that makes me think of um, the issue that some farmers had about the seeds that they were using, mm-hmm. um, genetically modified, and yeah. weren't allowing them to produce what they were supposed to produce, and mm-hmm. there was a law, class action lawsuit involving yeah. that. It's very interesting. Because I well it. I think Midwesterners, Westerners, and Southerners take their vegetation seriously. Yes, it's life. Because if you sit after a long day's work and you want to go sit on that picnic bench with that nice watermelon and you sink into it and your face is all nice and juicy, but there's no seeds. Yeah. That's not How good. How do you produce something after its kind if there's no seed attached yeah. to it? I never considered that. We always think about the convenience of things and I guess mm-hmm. the novelty of things. Mm-hmm. Seedless, this, that, but how are you producing it and yeah. the negative effects of it, hormones and stuff? Yeah. And so when you don't get the real natural nutrients of what you're consuming, then it has long term effects later on. Then it affects your children. It affects you immediately when with the health, but then it also affects your children. Even though the children like it, yeah. Physically later on down the line. 
a doctor will not be able to distinguish, hey, man, what type of flesh do you have mm. versus, you know, what we're looking at today. So Wow. wow. And, you know, well, just that you are such a wealth of information. I thank you for coming. I know you're very interesting. It made me think about, did you hear about the um, the nail class action lawsuit for hair relaxers? That's, no, oh, really? Yeah, Get that's out of new. town. They just introduced saying that it could they could have a connection to cancer. I haven't wow. used hair relaxers in over maybe 15 or 20 years for my hair. Mm-hmm. I just had it just to go all natural. But that's amazing. The, I guess the discoveries? Yeah. I think um, what happens um, we earlier in the show, we were talking about times and yes. how things change. Yes. Um, I'll give you an example. So I teach a Sunday school class on Saturday night. And one thing I tell the guys in my class, I said, listen, I'm going to use this term called dispensationalism. Yes. And they're like, what? What's that? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there are certain verses within the text that apply to certain time periods. So certain things within the Old Testament apply there. Some of that stuff in the Old Testament applies into the New Testament. So we have to be very aware and cognizant of how we use these Mm -hmm. verses and the terms and the times that we are living in. Okay. So a lot of that stuff they didn't expose, but as you go forward, People are now looking at ingredients. They're looking at the back of their box or their whatever. Everything. And they're like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be consuming this or we shouldn't be touching the skin. Yeah. Uh, layer another, upon layer. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I apologize. Go ahead. And then another thing that we will unfortunately be faced with in the years to come are the disasters. These aren't natural disasters. These are kind of like man-made disasters. Somebody had a hiccup, fell asleep at the wheel, closed Mm. their eyes, whatever the case may be. So the train wreck that caused all of that uh, chemical debris um, that the citizens, I believe, in the Midwest are still a little bit upset about. Yes, yes, I recall Um, that. The downside is that even though there's nothing visible but it's in the soil. Yeah, I was about to say that. And it's in the water. Oh, God. Which means it's going to affect our fish and it's going to affect our vegetation. Kind of like a Chernobyl type deal. Right. And so, yes. you know, as. <laughs> I mean, I know that's extreme, but seriously, it's <laughs> so, it know, effects on us. Later on down the line, you know, somebody's going to be eating something mm-hmm. and something's going to be wiggling. You know? Like, you know? <laughs> like, what is yeah. that? You and know? The, the videos of fishes with faces. Exactly. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, you know, we have to, um, we have to be aware. Some folks will downplay it. Oh, don't worry about it. Until it's time to Until, worry about right. it, like you said. Mm-hmm. And I think that because of where our children are nowadays, I've never seen such a rise in when we talked about mental illness mm-hmm. and autism. Yeah. I never. I knew that there was the term that we used to use was mental retard- retardation mm-hmm. or just being slow. That's the term that we used to use. Mm-hmm. And then we're more gentler in our language. So I, um, I, 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 I'm lost with that, I guess, transition, and they were trying to connect it to um, different things that we've used, saying that there was an uptick Mm -hmm. in children being born with autism. That's a great study. But I think that, um, like, for example, um, farmers that have cows with the hole inside of their bodies, they can reach in and see what they're being fed. I'm just like, um, yeah. Makes you wonder, like, is that that cow real? Yeah, (laughs) is that that? Even though I understand... The science behind it, I'm thinking, is that safe? Um, and the the prog- what they're trying to do is to get the best out of the cow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> as you said, what is that doing to the cow and, you know, what we're eating? It's, yeah, I think it's, in my opinion, some things we shouldn't. Let, and not, the, not letting our land rest continuously. Yeah. We're using- constantly, constantly. Uh, yeah, and that goes to us not resting. You yeah, know, always yeah. on the go, always mm-hmm. on the go. And that teacher aspect, maybe I should have just, I'm just going to make a list of everything. Because when you said, you just say, oh, yeah, and I teach on Saturday nights. Wow. How long have you been teaching? Uh, ever since I uh, joined this church, it's called, or well, the name of the church is called Pennsylvania Avenue Baptist Church. Okay. Uh, Reverend Curry uh, is our pastor. Okay. And um, I, I joined that on a whim uh, because every morning, I used to go down to Anacostia Park, get my pull-ups in, my push-ups in. And uh, I was running across a lot of people. And we would politic and talk, you know, science and shoot the breeze. And this guy was like, yo, you ever checked out uh, Pennsylvania Avenue Baptist Church? 
So I said, yo, man, if they, you know, doing all that tambourine and jumping, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> with that. You know, yeah. save that for the go-go. Yeah. And so I said, no, no, he's, you know, he's very astute. He's very polished. You should check him out. And they have an awesome choir. And so I went, met this uh, short lady, real sweet lady. Her name was Miss V. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking Miss V is going to take me around and put me in a class of my peers, of my age group. Nope. So when I walked into this classroom, there were three ministers, three deacons, professional high school, college instructors. Wow. I'm like, whoa. Where were you taking me? Exactly. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, my, my level of education is not on their level yeah. or professionalism. I said, do you have another class? And she's like, nope. And the guys were like, no, come on in here, young fella. So I was like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, um, where's the exit? <laughs> Make sure here, yeah, right. I was like, here we go. So I stuck it out, and uh, wow. we had really good uh, conversations. And I was like, because a lot of uh, educators were in the class, I said I had to step my game up. So mm -hmm. I then would go home, started doing research, started filming through the Bible, not only the Bible, but Wikipedia other denominations mm -hmm. and uh, their influence on society. Yeah. And uh, once I got a better grasp and understanding of what I was reading and what the purpose of this was for, yes. I was able to relate to the class. I taught one time wow. and then it became, they were, oh, Mr. Warren, you're, you're pretty good. Wow. I was like, nah, you guys are jiving because you don't have anybody else. They, they were, <laughs> I'm just oh, a feeling. Right. I'm like, I'm just a sub, a feeling. They were like, no, Mr. Warren, you're, you're good. Wow. So I'm like, okay, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, we're fine. Go ahead. So um, that uh, transitioned to a cousin in the Carolinas who put a bug in my parents' ear saying, hey, tell Mark to come down here because they're in need of teachers. So I said, you know I'm a city guy. I'm not going to the country. I can't do the country. There's <laughs> nothing to do down there. And my cousin was like, listen, you love to run your mouth. <laughs> they need male teachers down here. You have the experience. I think you would be a shoe win. And I'm like, again, it's the country. It's mm -hmm. way, way, it's not the city. I said, I need to see tall buildings. I need to see some dirt on the street, mm -hmm. a curb or a corner, a carryout, <laughs> not a something, carry out. A, a cab. I said, you can't even Uber down yeah. there. So I was like, Whoa. Listen, mm -mm. the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> So they were like, well, just give it a just give it a try. Uh, so my cousin reached out to a professor at uh, Central University in Durham, North Carolina. This guy gives me a call and said, I got your um, your credentials sitting in front of my desk. I got a spy in the family. How would you get my information? And he's like, I'm very impressed. Um, would you be interested in coming down? I said, I don't have a schedule like that to just up and roll down to the Carolinas. I said, but um, we can do further discussion on it. He's like, well, uh, let me give you some information on our program, how you can get certified, and we can get you teaching uh, in no time at all. So I'm like, ah, okay. So my dad is like, you sure you really want to teach? I said, but we can use reverse psychology. I can get them to teach me. And they will be more enthused than they actually think they are. He's like, he's like, what are you talking about? I said, listen, most teachers come on the scene. They have all the information. They have all the knowledge. And their credentials uh, qualify them to be in this position. I would like to flip the narrative and tell these kids, hey, I don't know anything, but mm -hmm. you guys do. And we'll say, why do you say that? Because you're constantly mm. in your phone. Oh, yeah. You're constantly getting information and knowledge about whatever. Yeah. I said, so, pull my coattail. I'd like to get on your level. You can educate me. Mm. And the guy was like, you know, I think that might work. I'm not, uh, what you would say, tech technology savvy. Okay. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I do have a laptop and phone, but I I try not to use those devices too much. Okay. So I can't do all of the slick loop and, oh, I can link to your phone mm -hmm. or I can link to his uh, laptop. I have no clue <laughs> <laughs> at all. I feel you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I was going to say that um, Matthew Henry's commentary is one of my favorites. I listen to him as well. I have had and um, 
what is his name? Um, last From, name uh, is Lee. Oh God, what is his name? He's he's a great teacher that um, I've been reading for a long time. I can't. Why is his name escaping me? Um, Prophet Lee. Okay, and he's, is he uh, Asian? Okay. Yeah. I have been listening to him. Wears glasses, I think. Yes. yes I've been oh listening to him. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that, um, been that's... getting a lot of information, good information from that guy. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, please, I'm open. If you would like to share any of your teachings, I'm very open. So um, I'm oh. the same faith, and I would love to. That. You're a teacher. What else? What else do you do on this side? You got your um, days are I, filled. I just, um, I, I, well, I was telling a guy yesterday, I was standing, we call it, in 80s, 90s term, we called it the pound. In millennial term, we were standing in front of the post office. So anyway, um, I was telling this guy, I said, listen, you know, I don't come out here too often, but because it's in my uh, means of transportation to work, from work, I have to board here, I have to get off here. So I engage with the people. The objective is not to say much. The objective is to let them see action display or speak for mm-hmm. itself okay. so that they can see how uh, men conduct themselves within the community. Okay. Okay. We're not belligerent. We're not fussing at anybody, starting a fight, pulling out weapons of that sort. Yes. Uh, we're trying to keep it cool, keep it simple. And hopefully it's a bunch of pretty ladies that are out ah. or <laughs> on their way to church or something like that. Um, but most importantly, it's conduct. Yes. And so people have, Character. I believe, gotten away from that. Yeah. Um, I blame the reality shows. People may mm-hmm. have a, another view on it, but uh, for me, it's uh, it's conduct. Uh, it's always been conduct because I never wanted to do something in public and then have that bad report beat me back to the house. Oh, yeah. So. It reminds me of when um, Reverend King said that we will be judged by the content of our character. Mm-hmm. It's not just the show. I think that social media, because you have this little phone and everything that we know about you is in this little screen, just like TV. Mm-hmm. So that's the real you. Yep. But the outside of it, like mm-hmm. you say, reality TV, it, it is real, but um, it's not all that there is. There's right. much more to it. But we seem to focus on um, being public figures <laughs> in mm-hmm. social media. Wow. Yeah. You know that we're going to have to do a part two. Oh, this is oh, going to be great. Oh, my goodness, because I, I had no idea. And I'm kind of insulted because we said, Mark, send us your bio. You sent me this. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing that we're getting this. But no, I appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. It has been a pleasure me. when Likewise. I come to Spring Valley to see you, great. to be engaged with you during those times. The Stroll Magazine event was incredible. Yes. I really loved it. Thank yes. you guys I for everything. Gonna, I think we're going to be doing something with them uh, in the future real soon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's mm-hmm. such a great reason. So I love the ladies there. So, um, Hat and Rita. Yes. So, thank you for being our guest. Well, thank you for here having in the me. Bethesda office here on another episode of The Hub presented by Capital Workspaces. We'll talk to you guys next time.